It's 10 p.m. in Zurich, Switzerland. The temperature is below zero. But despite the cold, the city's prostitutes are out plying their trade. The Strickplatz, a perfectly legal, purpose-built cul-de-sac where Johns can drive, bike, or even skateboard in to buy sex, is the city's solution to an abundance of street prostitution. My name is Thea Jacobs. I'm a feature writer for The Sun. I've come to Switzerland to investigate how the country's liberal approach to the sex trade is working for the people closest to it. In this film, I'll take you inside a brothel. We have a client here. I prefer the old men. Meet a man developing the Uber of prostitution and delve into Geneva's group sex sauna scene. Different in the... Uh, sex swing? Yeah. Glory hall. Well, at the glory hall. <laughs> yeah, the one uh, special, special uh, room. It's very strange. Oh! Yes. Prostitution has been legal in Switzerland since 1942, and the country has some of the loosest sex buying laws in Europe. Until 2013, teens as young as 16 were able to work as prostitutes here. Regulations vary throughout the country, but in some districts, buying and selling sex is legal in clubs, bordellos, private apartments, and on the streets. But the majority of the legal transactions take place in brothels, like this one in Geneva, which I've secured a private tour of. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Come on, please. I will show you the place, so please come with me. We have six rooms. All the rooms are different, you will see. When a client arrives, we told the girls, we have a presentation. We told the girls how is the client because the girl has uh, their preference. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they don't want to work with Asiatic clients or Arabic clients because maybe they know them. For the client it's not easy because you say to the client, take a seat. For me it's normal, but there are many girls who are coming just to say, hello, my name is Catalina, hello, my name is Bianca, and they leave, and then I need to remember which girl I want. It's complicated because they are so nervous. Sometimes it's not easy for them. Yeah. We have a client here. Prices start from £138 for half an hour with one of the girls, and extra services can be paid for on top of the generic package. The service include a erotic shower, a mm -hmm. uh, erotic massage, uh, one shed with the client, and oral with condom. But they decide. Lydia is 22. She's French, of North African descent, and has been at the brothel for one month. How long have you been working in the sex industry? Um, hmm, it's too much time. <laughs> and what made you decide to do this? Um, the first time because I have all of this for live, but the, when I do this, I like, and now it's my work because I like. After working in other European countries, she says she prefers Switzerland. Here is more expensive, we have more experience, we have uh, other people, it's not the same client, and I prefer here. Before, I worked in Germany and in the club, and in French, private escort. Here the men respect the girl and have money. It's not like uh, in Germany or French because the men want uh, more for nothing, you know. A good client is so men have too much money first for me. <laughs> I prefer the old men. Old men? Yeah. Why? <laughs> money. The brothel welcomes hundreds of clients each week. Many are businessmen on foreign trips who are happy to pay high fees and bring expensive presents for the girls. We have the client who come just for 30 minutes and sometimes they are here for a longer time. Because the client come not just for sex. Here in Switzerland the clients are alone, really. So they need to talk, they need to feel somebody, but it's not just sex. It's like um, make a relationship and don't feel alone, I think so. Victoria is from Brazil. She's worked in the Netherlands, Germany and Spain, but she says she prefers Switzerland too. Porque aquí tratan diferente las mujeres. Ya la casa es diferente porque 
Allí en España obligan a hacer muchas cosas a las mujeres, como besar, chuparse el condón, que te toquen, que te ves. She likes the money that can be earned from her work, but that affection doesn't always extend to the men spending it. Sí, la, ver cómo los hombres son tan animales y locos, pero, o sea, que me respeten, amor, que no estén muy drogados, que no huelan mal así, que me vengan a besar, uff, madre mía, señor. At Felina, there are clear rules about what can and can't be bought, and it's the girls who decide what's on and off the table. A ver, depende. Yo no doy besos de lengua, pero si veo que el cliente tiene una boca saludable y todo, por un plus, sí. About the rules for the clients, just to be nice with the girls. Uh, if they're not nice with the girl, it's where they live. Um, the service include, like I told you, massage, shower, um, regular sex, uh, and oral. So if the client wants something else, he needs to talk with the girl. And he needs to be sure that she wants to do it or she can do it. Mm -hmm. Because if the girl say no, it's no. It's warm in the brothel. It has to be, for obvious reasons. The situation for the women who work on the street is very different. At the Strickplatz in Zurich, girls wait in the freezing cold to be picked up and taken to a sex box with neon lights where punters pay for sexual services. Not only is this setup completely legal, it was built by the Zurich City Council with taxpayers' money, and they voted for it. It was hoped that the complex would help keep sex workers safe and contain the trade. But despite authorities declaring it a success, it has failed to curb the growing illegal prostitution run by violent traffickers. You are never sure if the, the person you're buying sex from is doing this really voluntarily, or if this person is doing this under pressure, or even is a victim of human trafficking. Olivia Fry is the manager of Zurich's Women's Centre, which wants the country to adopt the Nordic model, where sex buyers are criminalised, but the prostitutes themselves are not. So what we hear from, from them is that uh, most of them, if they had a uh, choice, they would love to do something else. Um, they feel victimised, um, they feel violated, um, they feel not treated as, uh, as, uh, um, as normal women. Some women who work in brothels have told me, you know, the morning I get up, before I get to work, I'm already in debt because I have to pay the lady answering the phone, I have to pay the guy um, doing the security in the brothel, I have to pay um, the ones in the office doing the advertising. So I'm already in debt in the morning when I get up and I have not even had one client. In Zurich, there are just three districts where street prostitution is legal. The former red light district of Langstrasse is not one of them. Nevertheless, the trade continues here in plain sight. There are certain um, bars that are very well known <laughs> for a, um, some kind of contact bars, so they are very well known. And around these bars, when you walk by there, you see a lot of uh, young women um, just lingering there and um, trying to make contact with the men passing by. So there are women from Nigeria at one spot, at the other spot there are Eastern European women. So they are brought here and they have um, thousands of uh, euros, uh, or they are in debt with their um, traffickers. They um, tell them if you, if you leave or if you don't pay your debts, we are going to harm your family uh, back in Nigeria. And they also have this kind of uh, voodoo spells they do. Um, and uh, tell them you get hurt or your, or your loved ones get hurt if you don't um, work until your death is uh, paid. One place that is very well known here in Zurich, there are four women sharing one room and they pay each per day like 200 Swiss francs and they live and work in the, in the same room, all four of them. So they, I mean, if you have already like 10,000 euros uh, um, costs for you know that for bringing them here and then every every day 200 francs more and uh, prices are very low to pay off their debts it's almost impossible it's estimated a girl looking to escape forced prostitution needs around 50,000 pounds a sum that's far out of reach for those under the thumb of gangsters 
The girls brought from other countries arrive already in debt to their traffickers, and things keep mounting. And many of the women who want to escape this life are working in areas of Zurich where prostitution is illegal, meaning if they get caught, they face large fines. Unless one of the victims speaks up, which is extremely rare, cops in the city are unable to investigate or do anything, allowing the criminal enterprise to thrive. It's a far cry from the upper tiers of the industry, even if, in essence, the service is the same. It's courting, it's prostitution. To make nice, everybody likes to use this, this word now, but actually, escorting and prostitution is the same. Leila owns Agence Elegance, a high-class escort service that caters for Switzerland's wealthiest clientele. A lot of girls nowadays want to do this, uh, this activity, but I'm very selective, so there is a special shape, a special attitude, and uh, it's important for me that I offer the service, that the, um, the level I want. The kind of girl, for example, when the girl is passing through a restaurant, uh, people, they just turn their head and say, wow, she's beautiful. And when I have girls like this in my agency, I'm happy and I'm happy to offer this kind of service to my client. When um, a rendezvous takes place, the girl has to be on time to the appointment, of course. She has to wear also very nice dress code. Sometimes they go and have a drink together. Uh, sometimes they go to the restaurant, they have a nice evening together and then they go uh, to the hotel or they to the room or to the apartment to have the private time together. It's uh, like a little story for two hours, 12 hours, and then uh, he goes back home and she goes back home. In a country famous for its wealthy citizens, some escorts can net 20 grand in just 20 days. But Leila insists the escorts work hard to earn the large sums. It's not easy money because there is a lot of personal investment in uh, this activity to look great, to take care of the body, to have a, a clear and a calm mind and to, to, to give the best services. She's speaking from personal experience as a former escort herself. It's a long story. <laughs> I had a man to forget in my life and uh, I was not able to forget him like this. I, I tried to meet other people, uh, other guy uh, and uh, finally I said to myself why I, I wouldn't try this activity and uh, ask for money. I chose to work at Agence Elegance and later I bought Lady Escort and I also bought uh, Agence Elegance. So now I'm running both. <laughs> Leila firmly believes the current system in Switzerland works and is safer than any alternatives. If there is a problem with a client, we can call the police to prohibit Prostitution is dangerous because this activity exists for a long, 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 long time. If you prohibit this activity, people, they will do it differently and undercover. If there is no law, there is danger for the woman. It's estimated that the legal sex industry makes around 1 billion Swiss francs in profits each year. And it's thought to be double the size of domestic cheese production. It's big business. And one tech entrepreneur from Zurich thinks he may have found a way to make the industry safer and revolutionise sex buying in the process. My name is Arik, I'm originally Swiss and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Choice. We are um, the first booking platform for paid companionship and intimacy that takes care of the end-to-end -end booking process. We actually build technology to establish trust in an industry where from our perspective it's long overdue. And it's been shown in other industries that technology can actually establish trust. Like think about transportation or accommodation. We used to say never get into a stranger's car. We used to say don't let strange people into your home. And now these are multi-billion dollar companies. Providers create a profile with us that is free of charge. So we don't charge any advertising fee or anything. They define their services, their prices. The only thing that we regulate is the minimum price. They can upload photos and all the photos get automatically blurred. So as a customer, if you would like to see more than what you're seeing right now, you would have to verify your phone number. Then we would unblur, uh, except for the face. And only if you went through the know your customer process, um, meaning scanning an ID, an official ID, a driver's license, ID, passport, plus a selfie, then you would see the face of the provider. Our list of services is very specific, so it's 89 
services across companionship and intimacy. And we want the list to be as exhaustive as possible, as legally permitted um, as well, so that there is no misunderstandings because some of the violations of behavioral guidelines or, or even the law are caused due to misunderstandings. So this is the profile creation page for providers. So here under um, ad services, they would define their prices and then the services that are included. So here you would see all the different intimate and companionship services. We rely on the community to provide missing services or services in specific areas. If you look at it from a definition perspective, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. For both provider and customers to be in agreement of what it is that is being asked and what it is that wants to be provided. After each booking, we are asking both parties whether the behavioral guidelines were met and if they would repeat the experience. Uh, and then if they say no, then we investigate and then either ban the customer or in the worst case, um, against the court order, the identity of the customer would get revealed. It's not just prostitution that's popular in Switzerland. Swinging and group sex clubs have a big place in the wider sex industry. Hidden behind a nondescript black door in Geneva is one of the oldest. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Fine, thanks. Can we come in? Yes, of course. Welcome in the Bandeleuf. The start, uh, this is open for the garderobe, for change. Take, take the clothes off. Turn in the tower. I have the tower for the every people. So tower. everyone is completely naked? Yeah. And then, uh, hop. I go to the shower, and after you have the choice on the rear pool mm -hmm. and the bath vapor uh, sauna. And do most people meet someone in here and then go to a private room? Yeah, normally before this, just for look, the people, and after I go to the private room. It's not obligation. Can you show us the private rooms? Yes, of course. Help. This is little uh, special room, just, uh, I don't know for the explication, who you look, you understand? Glory hall. Voilà, the glory hall. <laughs> a small glory hall, you have two, or one and one. Mm -hmm. And this one, you have the little for play. It's different in the... Um, um, sex swing? Yeah. It's very comfortable. <laughs> I have uh, one uh, special, special uh, room. It's very strange. It's oh! This. The name Fura Pizza. Pizza Haven. <laughs> Just the outside. Yeah, your head. This. The, the seat is this. Okay. You close the door. Oh. You don't look. The people I come to play with you. Oh, okay. It looks just the us. Yeah. At full capacity, the labyrinthine complex can host 104 people across some 12 different rooms, catering for many sexual kings. And you have the second possibility for the play the table. You mm -hmm. put this and. Ah, oh, okay. And for if many people uh, this place, ah, voilà. you possible this and. Uh... Okay. And for you possible the choice. Uh... <laughs> and is this a standing cross? Just for fun. Maybe yeah. imagination. Oh, okay. <laughs> Get a bit seasick. Inside the club, there is a strict no phones policy to protect the guest's privacy. The use of condoms is encouraged, but it's not mandatory. Every room, I have this. You have the problem, I don't know, how you, how you, you come and after it's not clean, you just this, and I have the, the montre, mm -hmm. and, the tick, 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 and I come for the clean. Okay. You see the woman, I have the problem, maybe, I don't know, just for the, the panic, you push, and the people I come. Okay, so it's a safety feature, yeah. and a cleaning feature. It's not only for the sex, I come for the bar, for the friend, the first Saturday is the naked party. 
for the gay people. The second Saturday in the beer party for the people, little uh, a special night for the beer. Three Saturday is the black party, is no light, is the naked. And the four Saturday in the couple party and uh, only for the mixed. Do you get a lot of English people coming? Yes, it's in the world. My peek inside the sex club is eye-opening, to say the least. It's clear that however you choose to satisfy your sexual desires, there's something for everyone in Switzerland. For a price. <laughs>